Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, March 19th. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, I'm the Wombat. Our guests today are John Richards from England, south of London. Welcome. Hello. And Dread Pirate Higgs from the western side of Canada. Welcome. Uh, The northern western side of Canada. There you go. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, Satanism, Pastafarianism, and sciences. Conversely, we're also talking about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. So if you're here in Knoxville, come out and meet with us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about it after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? We're going to be talking about Greta Christina's book called 99 Reasons, or I'm sorry, let's find out. Let me get the actual video. Why are atheists so angry? 99 things that make people (laughs) angry (laughs) about uh, the godless. So some choice of vocabulary. We're going to get into it in more detail and do some highlights from her book. But before we Mm -hmm. get into that main course, we're going to throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our uh, uh, daily dose of noodles. Of pasta and sauce, my heart doth sing as I knead and roll the dough with glee. And in the pot, the noodles doth cling, and the sauce simmers merrily. O flying spiggly monster, bless this dish with your noodly appendages divine, and let the meatballs bring us bliss as we feast upon this meal of thine. Mm. For thou art the saucy deity whose love for us never wanes, and in our hearts we feel thy charity as we twirl our forks with zeal and refrain. So let us raise our glasses high to the flying spaghetti monster in the sky. Dread, have you ever considered asking ChatGPT to make you a bunch more shanties for possibarianism? That's that's who's producing these puppies. Nice. Good job. Good yeah. job. Good job. I just I just put it, I just say compose. So I just this last one here. I just said chat GPT, compose me a pastafarian themed sonnet. In mm. the style of William Shakespeare. Nice. And that's what it did in less Ooh. than 60 seconds. What I do like about ChatGPT is how people are still interacting with it as if it is an actual thinking person and will say, yeah. like, hey, 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 sir, could you please do something like this for me? And the computer's just like, get rid of all the extra little bits and where's the directive? <laughs> but I like that we're still interacting with it uh, in a human thing. It's, if anything, improves, I guess, our empathy, not just towards uh people but like towards inanimate things too maybe we can take how we treat ai and apply it to how we treat the earth too and like maybe become oh i I spent a lot of time cussing siri (laughs) (laughs) i don't treat siri nicely at all no 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 wrong man i let the expletives fly okay okay In fact, I've selected a female voice for my sat nav so that I feel better about arguing with her. Wow, interesting. interesting. <laughs> hey, John Richards, how you been? I've been fine, <laughs> thank you very much. And it's all happening here. It's all happening here. What does that mean? Not here. Not not here, because that's I've lost my <laughs> I've lost my parliamentary background. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it, it it doesn't look. It looks way more free to me than than uh, that. So that's good. I can probably see some guys with guns on that road. So it's it's not that bad. <laughs> so what's happening here is I may have told you last week that I'm organising an event in London, hmm. and it's it's coming together. We've now got um, Richard Dawkins is going to be our our guest of honour at this event, and in addition to that, I I delivered a presentation at a an independent school. I think I told you that was going to happen last week. Very cool. That, that is now in the past and it's been videoed. And one day when they finished playing with it, we'll be able to upload it. Wow, that's so wonderful. That's cool. Um, speaking of like filming stuff, my job is filming another commercial at our site and they picked me to be the spokesperson for the show. 
Uh, they say Tyrone is the most engaging person that you can talk to. And I'm like, yeah, I know it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're, we're actually going to do is a three day shoot. Uh, we'll do some walkthroughs and B rolls. And then I got to go to Nashville to do some interviews and they're going to have oh. like a makeup person and everything like that. And then the last thing we'll do, this is the fun new thing. They're actually going to follow me around town, go to some of my favorite spots and like get film of me doing like disc golf throws, which I like uh films of me like volunteering at like the local schools and i'm like super happy about that but like uh atheists having an impact on local society and and just having like a good time outside uh and mm-hmm. applying that to the work life that i have it's like it's a nice full circle sort of uh uh testament of how much fun i've had since i started working here it's just really being nice normal thing. yeah just being normal it's like oh this is really cool this is a really nice environment this is really nice uh, Dred, want to check in with you. How you been? Well, I'm still working up north here in Fort St. John. So I can uh, tell the the aurora borealis is right behind you. It's it's really great. Yeah, and the Northern Lights. The other <laughs> lights too, right? Yeah. Hang so on. I, uh, yeah, so it, pretty soon uh, they'll have what's called breakup because as the uh, <laughs> as the frost leaves the ground, okay, uh, it'll be quite muddy and mucky, so they don't want uh, big big machine heavy trucks and, and big machinery uh driving through the forest service roads so they call mm. that breakup so we'll be uh uh out of work here for about a month i guess so okay um that'll let me uh go back home and catch up on my past stats and on my uh my taxes and all that kind of stuff i gotta do yeah, yeah. So. dread you've never struck me as a person who didn't have something to do no, <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Even on my days off, I uh, I spent hours. Well, I, I guess the last person who used my truck or was assigned the unit I have, which is a medical treatment, mobile medical treatment center, um, they didn't uh, clean it uh, after leaving the company. So I spent six hours having to do that to get it patient ready, you know. Wow. wow, wow, wow. Restocking supplies and all that kind of stuff. So. I've flown in to join you, Fred, and it, it yeah. is nice. It's nice up here. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Larry, checking in with you. How you been? I'm doing fine. Just working and playing computer games. Nothing new, really. Have you read um, any good books lately? I do a lot of reading online, but I haven't read any books lately. The last one I, I think I read was about Trump. <laughs> I read two or three out of him from his family and his lawyers and stuff. Oh, gee whiz. I met, have you read any books about atheism lately? Maybe with a lady named Greta? I don't know. Anything you'd like to talk about and introduce? (laughs) Yeah, I haven't read a book. I I read her articles and uh, I listened to her podcast. podcast. She's an author and a podcast uh, person, writer. Um, She wrote an article back in 2011 that that sparked a lot of discussion and a lot of approval from atheists because she really hit the coin on the head or the nail. She wrote an article called uh, 50 Reasons Why Atheists Are Angry and Have Every Right to Be. Um, I've talked to a lot of people that ask in atheist tables, you know, believers, non-believers, and the people in between, and a lot of them seem to have the impression that atheists are angry. And sometimes we do get angry, especially when we're talking about the subject, uh, religion, because of the problems that it's caused to society. And uh, that's all. I mean, she's uh, she's written another book uh, since the article. She wrote a book called 99 Reasons. So she's expand, uh, expanded on the reasons why atheists are angry. Anyway, um, I believe you've done some research on her as well. Yeah, I have. So I got in uh, a copy of the digital book that she has, which is available on Amazon. I would suggest anyone who's interested in check out Why Are Atheists So Angry? Uh, There is a paperback version you can get, but there's also a free version you can get that's also offered through the same link. So if you're interested in it, you can check that out too. Uh, There's also, I imagine a lot of this is also posted on her blog. Uh, She's making an attempt to make the information available to everybody. But the idea is, uh 99 reasons why uh it can be so irksome to have to deal with religious people and some highlights from that list uh one is that she says that um the 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 framework of religion is such that it seems like it does significantly 
more good than harm, or at least that's how it frames itself to be. So even when atheists say, well, it's doing X, Y, Z, believers can say, but look at all the good it's doing. I mean, just look at the fact that it helps people know how to treat other people. It gives people morales. Um, it, it teaches them to be nice. It shows them, even if they can't think about you no know, morality or ethics, there's a God <laughs> that's watching them. That makes them behave good. And therefore, it's it's overall better than to take that all away and suddenly have complete anarchy. And the analogy that she brings up is the Santa delusion which I think was really, really good in the sense that, okay, so you have this idea of Santa Claus, right? Are you guys familiar with Santa in UK and Canada? Uh, or yep. is it like, uh, well, how do you say Santa Claus with a Canadian accent? That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to think about it. <laughs> oh, Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, St. Nicholas, right? So he watches you when you're sleeping. He knows if you've been bad or good. You know, he, he he gives you coal if you've been bad. He gives you presents if you've been good. So there's a whole carrot and a stick situation. And people can use that as a as a as a way to try to control their behavior. But I find mm -hmm. that to be such a lacking ethic because it's not really controlling the intention of a move, aside from just trying to reward good behavior and punish bad behavior it's so superficial dread you like philosophy what do you think of the idea of like hey listen if you're good i'll give you candy if you're bad i'll give you coal that's all the morality you need have fun go outside and have a good day yeah yeah let's let's do it that's not morality though it's obedience it's authoritarianism you know uh certainly kant and uh hume both argue from different sides, hmm. that uh, morality needs to be authentic. You know, uh, it has to guide your behavior authentically and not just uh, arbitrarily, which is what uh, the kind of morality that's offered from the Bible. I mean, we've, we've said this a, a number of times that there's, there's nowhere in the commandments that says, uh, you know, do not uh, have sex with children or, or, hmm. uh, do not uh, do it's not like rape people. your, you know, yeah. like yeah, and you know, <laughs> so and of course, there's so many examples in the Bible, mm. you know, like do not hold slaves. Well, you know, is it was it moral then to to hold slaves because God said, well, this is how you treat them. Yeah, uh, by mm. all means, you know, yeah. just as long as they're <laughs> not your fellow Hebrews, uh, yeah, go ahead, take your pick from uh, any other peoples of <laughs> no boat. You know, Larry, yeah. what do you think? Well, you were saying earlier that it, the Bible teaches us how to treat people. Well, that sounds good, but <laughs> does it teach us how to? How does it teach us how to treat uh, well, homosexuality right. or homosexuals, or uh, in some cases uh, even Jews? Um, the Bible says that the death of Jesus was on our head, meaning the Jews' head, and they've been persecuted for that particular line for you know for thousands of years. Mm. Uh, the, how do you treat a woman who's not a, a virgin on the on their wedding night? Mm. You know, it, it goes on and on and on. It's it's all obedience. Do this, don't do that, on pain of punishment. But I think yeah. obedience is not a, a morality. But you're overlooking something. It makes people comfortable, and it's also useful to control people. Isn't that worse? Well, something? sure, it's useful to control people. But is that a good thing? It's good to dictators. It's good to it's cult leaders. Mm. It's not good to people per se. John, it makes people comfortable to believe in a God. Isn't that in its own right more good than any harm that can come about from it? So does a teddy bear. I've got nothing against that. You know, people want a bit of comfort. Mm. Get yourself a, um, a, a dummy. <laughs> Well, you don't call them. What do you call them? A comfort? I don't know what you're. A, a, a pillow? What do you? What? A, a no, no, these things that babies have in their mouths. You oh, pacifier. Pacifier. Pacifiers. Pacifier. Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We would call them a dummy. So they, if you think about the word, it keeps them pacified. Right. Same yes, with yeah. religion. Mm. Yes. Well, if you think about the word dummy, it's a dummy for a nipple. <laughs> 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 I like it. I like it. I like uh -huh. it. Yeah. And it's a lot shorter than pacifier. Weird question. So um, weird question then. Are, do you still call people who are ignorant dummies? Yes, yes. Okay. But okay. that's 
we we've picked that up from you that came across the atlantic wow okay cool that's great all right i'm sorry continue with, continue with your manifesto well okay <laughs> what what i wanted to do is start out with uh, disagreeing with the, the the premise of the of the question because mm. i you, you I've noticed in my interacting with a lot of lovely Americans like yourselves and, and Canadians, guys, that um, you have a lot of angry atheists, militant atheists, um, atheists which have a grievance and want to strike back because mm. they've been hurt sure. in the past. We don't have so many of them here because mm. since very few of us were inducted into a religion and indoctrinated and didn't have to waste our lives going to church every Sunday and, you know, behaving as though there was a God up there and, you know, minding our various P's and Q's. We didn't have any of that. So we don't have the grievance. So we're not angry. I'm quite, mm -hmm. I'm quite a cuddly bunny. <laughs> well, there are still things that if you think about them can make you angry. Like, uh, well, you don't have to deal with the religion that we do here in, in grained in our society. I mean, 90% uh, of, of our Congress and uh, the president and the vice president and all the leaders of each state are professed yeah. Christians. And it's mm -hmm. really hard to even get elected unless yeah, yeah. you are a professing Christian. Right. Yeah. And they tend to pass laws that support Christianity over, over secular values. Right. And yeah. that, that alone is one main reason to get angry. Uh, right. Uh, and they and they exist in a level where they're not affected by it dread what do you think mm -hmm. i was going to say one thing i hear in that shouldn't be confused is we're not angry or atheists aren't angry at god hmm. oh no when, when i first uh you know had that conversation with uh, a fellow mason to say that i i could no longer be a mason because i i couldn't support the belief in that uh, particular deity he says, oh, well, you're one of those people that are angry at God. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, no, that's, that's, you're missing the point. <laughs> An atheist doesn't, it's not about anger at something that doesn't exist. You know, it's, it's just a lack of evidence for uh, supporting right. a justified true belief in oh, that kind right. of a thing, right? <clears throat> right. So well, it's right. one thing to be angry, but, <clears throat> you know, to be specific that we're not angry at God. Yeah. I always like to ask them when they pose that question to me, I say, like, why are you angry at Santa Claus? And the first thing out of their mouth is, you know, I'm not angry at Santa Claus. He does. He's not real. Right. And then <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I just look at him. You know, yeah. how can you be mad at something that is real? I wanted to make a point, too, that <laughs> while we're talking about, like, who are you angry at? I, when I say um when i came into atheism i came into it with a lot of anger but not just for myself but for myself as a believer and the anger that i have towards or the feelings that i have towards religion are really more of like what it does to other believers from the position of i used to be a believer and you're still doing the things that i found to be vile and toxic against yeah. me to other people and so I'm angry, not for the sake of other believers, but just for the sake of compassion that I have for people in my, in my culture, people in my, you know, you know, social biosphere, like there's, yeah. there's people who I can see actively suffering, or at least being treated against their best interests by a dogma that's controlling how they think, how they appreciate other people in their lives, families being torn apart, uh, groups being marginalized, science being inhibited for the sake of what uh a couple of stories in a in a book like this is such a terrible situation like we just went through this whole vaccination crisis and a lot of the inhibition that came from it was fears that were stoked by religious people uh churches that we've had in this state who say you don't need to take a vaccine you can't trust it instead here's a here's a cup of water that has a red string dipped in it you just drink from this water and you're good to go or you tie this around or uh don't trust what your doctors say trust what i say or we can pray this you know uh, uh virus away stop don't never come to church keep coming to church and and yeah. and continue to keep spreading it around we've had active sources where we can see it harm everybody in our community and oh. i'd like to just move us away from that sort of mindset and when i and when i try to figure out where's the foundational 
person to argue against. It's not any particular pastor. It's not me or it's not any particular believer. It's the religion. It's the framework of this you know, institution that tries to misinform people for its way to get money. And I just find that to yeah. be such a vile thing. Yeah. Well, again, this you, what you've done there is you've talked about culture and dogma, and it's so very different from where I am. Ooh. Because uh, over here, if you're a politician, you, you want to keep your faith secret because it's nobody will vote for you if if you come out strongly as one faith or another mm. and we have a mixture of faith believers in our parliament we have a sikh we have a muslim you know we have christians but they it's low key because mm. it's it's not an it's not a vote winner i'm afraid right. in this country well i'm not afraid i'm pleased good yeah 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 it, 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 nevertheless they still have 26 bishops in there right well, yeah, now we're working on that because that is an anachronism. And uh, I could tell you more about the campaigns that we're doing to get rid of that. A horrible leftover from King Henry VIII. But um, uh, Reece, you mentioned red string. Hmm. I don't know where that came to be a thing, but I do know that a pastor in South London was sentenced to two years in prison for selling red oil with a bit of string in it mm. as a covid cure and charging 91 pounds i think for it and telling his congregation that they could die if they didn't buy it we've so, had we've had people in the state sell sawdust we've had people uh uh obviously pray to get try to get it away um we've mm. had oh my gosh any number of crackpot theories to try to get rid of COVID. We've had the president of the United States say you should drink diluted bleach. Uh, yes, we've yes. had we've had so many bet. We've had that one random. Uh, there was a run on cough syrup that we've had uh, just because people thought that you could do something in cough syrup to make it like go away. We've had that weird new uh, theoretical medicine that didn't pass through the FDCA or FDA. Yes. Uh, yes that the president said he took and then turned out he was being slightly sponsored by them. Uh, yes. you know, vaccinations are good and they're useful and they're just very straightforward when you understand how they work. Um, they take a, a marginal, a marginal level of scientific understanding to say mm. you expose yourself to a small amount that can't, can, that can't make you sick, but can at least teach your body what that virus looks like. Then you'll know how to treat it in the future. Mm. Yeah. It, it's, it's that straightforward and simple, but um, we don't live in a universe where, or we don't live in a society in America where we, we support that kind of education uniformly across the states. And I feel like it's the conservativeness that we have in this country that's keeping that away from, against that. But I, I want to continue with this in a minute. So let's have, let, there we go. Yeah, okay. No, I'm, uh, we're talking about reasons to be angry. Um, it, religion is used to divide people. I mean, right now, America is divided worse than I've ever seen it, and I'm 70 years old. And yeah. why? Because the the right have gotten in bed with fundamental religion, uh, yeah. the evangelical right. Uh, yeah. And they are pushing all kinds of agendas, including abortion, uh, hate for uh, gays, um, et cetera, et cetera. And even uh, George H.W. Uh, Bush said of atheists he says i don't know that atheists should be regarded as citizens yes yes and i mean that's that kind of thing that religion does that makes us angry oh. that is one of the 99 things that uh, before we do to. before we do go out to break i do want to say like i do, i've i've not been along as live as larry but i had i can throw this out and say um i don't think things are getting more separated if anything the tools to keep keep us together are more available to us now more than ever have been before. And our access to information and media and culture outside and of our sequestered area and disinformation <laughs> along with that, but also knowledge and, and an awareness or instruction set to how to get better information with even shows like this are available to us more so now than they ever have been before. And I feel like today, more than any other day, I feel more capable of being an outspoken atheist than I had any time in my past. True. I think That's we're true. doing... We're doing that because we're doing this work now. And I'm wow. saying as long as we can continue that, we're in, we're going towards a good trajectory. Um, and uh, while things aren't good now, we are still a lot of work to be done. We, we are pioneers in the idea of free thought. And I want us to continue down that path. 
Um, we're heading towards the end of the half hour. Larry, do you want to take us out? Sure. You're listening to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm DJ Doubter 5, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year, and we have over 1,000 members coming up on 1,100 here shortly. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom ASK meeting. If you'd like to join us there, no matter where you live, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, meetup.com or our website at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meet up and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Oh, don't find don't one. one. Start, Start one. one. Right. Where do you want to pick up one? But Yo, I wanted to talk a little bit before we move on to the next uh, Christina or uh, Greta Christina topic. The argument of utility, because I didn't really I don't know if I got a chance to, to highlight my problems with that. So the idea behind the Santa delusion is that, hey, if it makes people comfortable and it has some uses, it's therefore good, you know, and it's it's therefore useful. And Dredd, I'm sure you're familiar with Bentham as a as a, a moral philosopher. Uh, he's very strong in the argumentation that uh, the more useful something is, the more moral it can be. And, and that's, I know that's, that's a truncated version of it, but uh, the argument of utility has never been a very um, pro, uh, uh, logical it's one. It's not for me. pervasive. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has a lot of limitations. In fact, could be really problematic. But a lot of the early philosophers are very religious, right? And so they would often come, they would often color their philosophies with what makes the best sense in a religious context. And so Bentham had an argument for utility. The Santa delusion is very much an argument of utilities. Listen, I have this philosophy that helps make your kids behave better. It makes it get, makes people comfortable. It makes them happy. Everybody wants to be happy, comfortable, and have uh, well-behaving kids. Therefore, we don't have to think about this anymore. Let's just do it. Uh, I have a lot of problems with that. I like the idea of morality as a system to assess the consequences of my actions and try to use that as a framework to make the best action. And it's not so much uh, uh, a measurement of, okay, I want to do one action. Is it going to get me the most cake? <laughs> or is it going to get me the most whips at the end? It's like, no, I want an action that everybody can follow. I want to use my morality as a framework to come up with rules that society can follow that will be in their best interest and increase the maximum well-being of a particular population, or at least for what we're doing right now. Uh, and 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 the better I can codify those rules and the better I can understand the exceptions, the more I can come up with uh, uh, valid and ethical punitive measures in the event that things get broken, that we can all come up with like a, some sort of social contract and agree upon. And we have essentially this living document, this system that we can constantly keep improving. I want it to be like a science where we don't have like these definitive you know, black and white statements that never change, but rather a system that we can keep cross-checking with each other. And with the Santa delusion, you never have that. You never have any way to fact check or ask Santa anything or come up with different sort of rewards or punishments other than coal and I guess Xboxes or whatever, whatever Santa makes you. Um, it's it's very much a one-sided system that's given to you by an authoritarian to to elicit some sort of behavior from you. And, and it's only for the use of trying to make you be a bit more obedient, but not really a more moral person where you think critically about the actions that you, be, you perform in society. And when you're introduced to a novel new situation or problem, the gods, the Santa and the God uh, stories don't offer you anything useful, whereas a moral morality system that you could work with can. And that's why I like the general moralities that we work with or the more modern ones that we have now because they've been worked on so much. Larry, what do you think? Well, sure, I agree. 
Now, one thing you should ask yourself when an authoritarian figure tells you that you need to do something is how will that thing benefit the authoritarian figure? Oh. Because it usually does. And you <laughs> question that. It's true. It's true. And the weird, sad thing is um, the more the modern moralities that we have also benefit authoritarian figures, too, because it benefits everybody. But it, the the Santa delusions and the God delusions that we have right now is so lopsided in who they benefit. The followers get to feel comfortable, whereas the 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 leaders get to feel comfortable and get paychecks and get you know control and oftentimes abuse it, but with no punitive measure or or fact checking or systems of correction on their part. They exist in their own stratosphere of of existence where they can't be questioned or or treated or lose their job, and and that is just prone to corruption. We just know the human system too well. Um, okay, guys. Oh, go ahead, John. Well, you said a lot of stuff there. Sorry. I, I, I want to respond to that because you used the expression, the idea of morality, you like the idea of morality. And then later on, you said we can come up with rules. So what you have illustrated to my way of thinking is that this is all thought. Morality is thought. It's in the conceptual realm. It's inside heads. And inside heads, of course, we can, there's no limit. We can have any sort of thoughts we like. We can even have absoluteness. Mm. But, and then you went on to say about, um, it's difficult to check these things. And of course, the only way we can check concepts is by investigating for congruence with observations in the natural realm. This mm. is how science works, Ty, you know yes. all about that. And of course, if you do that, you find that there is no absoluteness. It's not always bad, bad in quotes. Yes. That's a value judgment which a person has to come to. It's not always bad to kill. There's such a thing as mercy killing. Correct. And there's such, a, there's such a thing as killing somebody who would be exterminating somebody more vulnerable, in which case you, the, you, could, you could argue that on balance it's better to kill the killer. So... What, what I'm coming around to here is that morality is a system of ideas. Yes. It doesn't really have any match with, with reality. So morality, equation mark, crossed out, reality. As in reality, what we have is acceptable social behavior. And we've evolved pretty much a system to do that in fact if you look further back in our ancestry you'll find that some you can even go back to insects and find that they have some relationship with each other they can teach each other where to go for the for the best honey and so mm. on and so forth so what i'm saying is that we have in our subconscious a system of rules i'm not going to call them morality they're generalized ideas but then in our conscious mind we can impose tweaks we can say i'm going to follow my subconscious or not i'm going to review every incident as an individual case by case study hmm. that was and a we, rant. no and we model reality all the time and what the beauty of morality is, is we can model not just actions, but behavior or the intentions of our behavior when, yes. and, and model out potential consequences that aren't just based in physics, but how other people react to that in a, in a society where people's actions influence and have consequences on each other. We can think about how that would impact each other and try to yes. come up with the best system that makes yes. everybody you know, uh, exists and hopefully a better state of well-being. Exactly. That is a That's valuable right. tool. And you can't just make That's a it. codified list of rules to be like, just don't steal, just don't think no. about your neighbor's wife and don't no. don't, no. don't love anyone. We've morning. evolved. We've right. evolved that tool. We've evolved. Hmm. the. We wouldn't be able to succeed as much as we have as a species if we hadn't learned to cooperate, which requires us to, to put ourselves in another person's shoes. Right. Because otherwise, if, if we treat them badly, we're going to lose their cooperation. And that could spell the end of the human race. Larry, what do you think? Well, I, yeah, I was going to just say that uh, one of the things we're kind of talking around but not talking about is 
that we need to base the morality or the rules on empathy and compassion. Yes. Not on not on authoritarianism. Uh, also, we need to keep in mind equality. Uh, the founding fathers were very big on equality, even yeah. though they overlooked um, you know, a large portion of the uh, the population when they did. We need to do better than that. Yeah. Uh, so authoritarian is not a good basis for uh, yeah. empathy. I mean, or morality, empathy, yeah. compassion, equality. But here's yeah. the thing: it's really complicated to do that because there's a lot of different kinds of people. So wouldn't it be better if we could just put people into groups where it's easier to just say, <laughs> well, those are the those and we are the we are the us's. No, <laughs> so, they aren't really people. And Short we're, answer. We're, no, <laughs> that's what religions do. But we're uh, the no, chosen no. people. And now we only have to and worry about is. the people in this room. Yeah. Or the According to the book we wrote. <laughs> and everybody else is different. And if we don't have to. Devil's do advocate. Devil's advocate. <laughs> <laughs> so what Larry was doing when he was saying that authority is bad is he's pointing to religions because religions are all up to their right. necks mm. in authoritarianism. Right. We don't want that sort of stuff. We want democracy. Right. And I, I want to tell you about a show I watched this morning on our local TV. It's called Celeb Pilgrimage. And it was a collection of uh, famous UK stars that have been on our on our small screens, you know, and uh, they were sent to walk hundreds of miles to some uh, pilgrimage site. And they'd assembled an, a young influencer, a woman who has uh, uh, a channel on t on youtube and and they had a, a Sikh who used to be a cricketer they had a a ex-roman catholic they had you know a selection of different um faith-based people including mm. some who profess to have no faith and they sent them on this walk and they were all conversing about what their upbringing had meant for them and the the influencer the youngest lady there said when I tell people that I'm a Christian, they laugh at me. That's the situation in the UK. If you admit that you are a believer, you're ridiculed. Good. Well, you want you want some of that, don't you? You you want some tongue in cheek with that. You want that to be in the same scope as someone who says, "Well, I read horoscopes." You want it to be like, "Ah, that's 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 a little right. silly." But you don't want it to be like, "Oh, I'm better than you because you have this." this system of operation. And I also don't want that system of operation to dictate how my life is run. But like, right. at least in America's concern, you can have, you are free to have a religion, but you should also be free of that religion without any sort of degree of prejudice. And if we can just get to there, it's nuanced, but if we can get to there, I'd be so happy. Because again, we have a president right now, Joe Biden, yeah. Catholic, staunch Catholic, absolutely does believe in God, goes to the church before he even gets uh, in, uh, uh, enrolled in his it does a swearing on the Bible and becomes a president, but is willing to go against his religion in terms of policy for the better interest of the people that he is governing. And I feel like that's what we want from our leaders. Like, hey, if you got a religion, that's fine, but you're the president. So be the president. And then on your own free time, pray to whoever you want to believe in. I, I'd love to have that. We had the flip on the last president. We had a president yeah. who didn't even know how to hold a Bible the right side way. <laughs> yes. and, and was just terrible from front to back. I would rather have a president that's religious and can separate his religion from his policy than yeah. one who, who has no scruples whatsoever. Like I, there's, there's clearly an in-between there that we can get. Follow Dread Europe. We're ahead over here. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, we can learn a lot of things from you. Guaranteed. Uh, Dread Pirate, got a question from you. It's coming directly from the book. I would like to get your feedback on the nuanced nature of why atheists might be angry. And I'm going to ask this to a Pasifarian. So uh, Greta Christensen writes in her book, you might have noticed based on when you read this book that much of what makes atheists angry isn't the bad things religious believe or that not is, isn't the bad thing that religions do to believers as atheists. A huge amount of our anger is about the bad things believers do to other believers. That's the gist of this book. Atheist anger doesn't prove that we're selfish or joyless or miserable. It shows that we have compassion and a sense of justice for our fellow people. We're right. angry because we see terrible harm all around us and we feel desperately motivated to stop it. Dred, what do you think about that? True. True. Well, you know, I've, I've said this before, how interesting I find it that, um, you know, Christians, Jews, uh, Muslims, 
Buddhists, they will, you know, gather together and fight against atheists as though, um, you know, like you were saying about uh, uh, elected officials in America, mm. um, you know, as long as they're religious, you know, they stick together until until all the atheists are gone and then and then they squabble amongst themselves so <laughs> it's uh very much uh you know the uh in-group uh mindset you know when it's an in-group as long as you're religious in some way hmm. until you end up having to you know it's it's like musical chairs right right um you know and everyone wants the atheist to be the first one off off a chair <laughs> you know it kind of reminds me so i think i can give credit to this to europe but there was a period of time where people did not believe in germs it was a, a right. concept called germ theory and yeah. so they realized like hey if we wash our hands before we deliver babies the chances of the babies living is substantially higher than us just being macho men and just walking into the lady and being like i'll take that baby out of you it's like do you want to wash your hands first like no i know i don't believe in germs you can't trust these light so me a cigarette yeah light me a cigarette <laughs> blowing in the baby's face she, <laughs> she's totally fine the so there's the idea of like there was once a group there was once <clears throat> a time where no one believed that uh germs existed or a problem but then there was a group that was like i i am anti-germ and i'm going to wash my hands and that's a change or at least a group that might have been different from the prevailing uh, misconception at the time. And it took a lot of effort. It wasn't overnight to get people to adopt the practice, to wash their hands, to see the benefit of it, to understand the science behind it, to appreciate that as a culture and to build infrastructure to allow people to wash their hands more regularly. Right now, we're very much in that same uh, analogous scope where there is a group of people who, at least in America, are not popular just due to the fact that they agree not to wash their brains with dogma or doctrine or something like that. I know I kind of reversed the analogy, but like there's a there's a God contaminated society, and there are people who have washed their brains from it, and they're taught and they're looking at all the other people and saying, "Listen, you don't have to do these things." And in fact, it's kind of harmful if you maintain this current practice that you're doing. It's good for you to wash out your your philosophies and ideas and see which ones are the best afterwards, because there's a lot of grime and, and, and dirt with the current practice that you're following. And there are people like, I don't believe in critical thinking. <laughs> I don't believe in modern medicine. I don't believe in evolution. I don't believe in science. I don't believe in people who, who uh, education for, 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 for many people, because that's just going to affect me in some way. And my only response to that is it's only going to make your life better guaranteed. And uh, not only will it make it better, but it'll make your the life of your kids and our culture and everything else substantially better in your interests. Whereas the current life practice that we have, where you maintain this gram and grit, puts you at a lower standard of life that you could be able to get out of if you were only willing to ask yourself some questions and shed some of these um, outdated ideas and misconceptions that you have. Um, so when I see what I what I hear from Greta is this argument that um, I'm not angry what religion did to me. In fact, I'm happy that I went through the experience that I did and got out of it as a better critical thinking person. I I, I envy it more so than uh, even people who've never had the chance to be indoctrinated and get out of it. Uh, so John, I'm happy you've never been indoctrinated, but I am also happy that I've gone through that practice because I'm substantially more well-guarded against stuff like that moving forward in the future. But I'm also angry that we live in a world where we allow believers to still do that to other believers. And I am motivated to try to stop that for their sake, because I'm not fundamentally a different person than I was when I was a believer myself, but I'm a much better person as a result of being able to now think critically for myself. And I just want other people to have that opportunity for them too. Well, I take, I take that point. And the, the only difference between us is that I don't have the grievance because I was never indoctrinated, but I'm still keen to stop people from influence in, from forcing their yeah. belief system to others because mm. I see the harm that it does. Mm. And I worry, I worry, and I wouldn't say everyone should go through an indoctrination phase, but I've lived in Sweden for a bit. So like there's America, which is very, you know, you know how America is. And then there's Britain who is in the process of like egalitarianism, but also it's still it's still nested in there somewhere. You still got the, mm. the, the priests in, in the parliament. But then you have Sweden, which is like, 
that is such a non-conceptual thing here. And the churches we have are like just where we play volleyball. Like we don't take any of this seriously. But you get people who never get the chance to think critically and 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 or at least have their suspicion radar, you know, well calibrated for when the Christians start moving in, because there are a lot of people who are targeting uh, uh, Norway and Europe for the next wave of religion. And, and there's already books and, and people doing missions there and Mormons learning Swedish because it's a very captivating demographic to get. And there's a lot of money in those areas and they're ripe for plucking until those people are willing to question just as aggressively as a former religious person would be. Or, or or someone who is, you know, in England right now, too. So I just say it's it, there's no excuse not to know how to think critically. And it's not like something that you just get intuitively. It's something you need to practice. You got to work on it. And it's a skill that you have to develop. And it needs to be trained. And you have to, have to maintain it. And it's, um, as a result, I, 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 I want everybody, not just, you know, people who are religious to learn how to think critically. I want even people who've never been exposed to religion to go through the same practices as well. That's how we get everybody out of it at once. Yeah. A big part of this thing too is, is that we have to guard each other. Mm. I mean, the mm. idea, you know, if you check out the Wikipedia um, entry for uh, fallacies, you'll find, you know, about 200 of them. Um, and, and that's what we need to guard each other against is, you know, as a critical thinker, it's not just enough to, know what those 200 are and right. try to uh, figure out which ones you're employing at any given time. Right. It's uh, we have to watch each other's backs with respect to uh, what other people say to us about different things and say, uh, are you sure that isn't some kind of a cognitive bias that you're trying to sneak in there? Yeah. Not, not intentionally, but sometimes these things slip past us We're we're not perfect. And, and as you indicate, um, reason doesn't come natural to uh, humans. It's a it's a muscle like a intellectual muscle. Mm. We have to continually practice and, and work on it. Um, yeah. But like I say, you know, it's it's something we have to, uh, you know, be mindful to keep an eye open on our fellow critical thinking beings. Dred, you make a great point because you could also you can think of like ideas and theories and hypotheses are sort of like a pot of cake batter, right? And logical fallacies are flies, right? And you don't want them in your cake batter. And if you see one like sitting on the side of the bowl, but not in the batter, you're like, you want to tell the guy, the baker, your friend, hey, there's a there's a fly on your bowl. And you don't want you don't want the reaction to be like, oh, it's it's fine. It's just an, it's it's OK. Like, it's not that big of a deal. It's like, it's yes, it is. <laughs> it's, <laughs> or I'm not going to take your cake. I'm not saying it ruins the entire cake. It probably adds some good protein, but like you can make that same cake without that fly there. And I'm only letting you know that for your own best interest. And so like yeah, yeah. The, the greatest thing that uh, another critical thinker can do for another critical thinker is to think critically about the things that they're, they're saying and be critical. That's always in the interest of everybody, right? We don't want to eat cakes with flies. John Richards, what do you think? Well, do, do you have Garibaldi biscuits in the States? I don't know. Uh, Larry, I, I don't know. know anymore. Uh, you might Gary be talking Baldi. about cookies. Are you talking about cookies? No, no, I'm talking about biscuits. Garibaldi biscuits. He was an Italian chef, I think. But we, we used to call them fly biscuits because they're two slices of biscuit with a load of currants in between. And it looks oh. very... Uh, <clears throat> that's great. Guys, I think we're near the end of the show. There was a lot more that we'd want to cover, but maybe we can move to another we show. We still have a few minutes, though. So. Okay, so, Dred, where can we find your stuff at? I'm at Mind Pirate on YouTube, and when I'm on, I live stream this at 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time now. Nice. Uh, and then when I'm on uh, for Global Atheist News, Views of the News, that's at 11. Is it 11 or 12 now? Well, w what we've done, Dred, is we've kept it at your time and altered the English time to suit. And now, how kind is that? So well, what time is it? What awesome. time is it? English time or Greenwich Standard Time? Well, tonight it's six p.m. Six GMT. Oh, yeah. So that makes that eleven a.m. for me. You're where you are. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Well, hopefully, I'll be there. Uh, I've got some training to do um, at nine a.m. So I'm hoping it's less than two hours. Uh, and my where I train is 
just a couple of minutes away. So yeah, uh, check me out on Mind Pirates. And uh, I, I do, I've now been doing uh, weekly benedictions on there as well. So hmm. um, if you miss it here, then go there. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if God wanted everyone to be able to pray to him at the same time. Why don't you just make the earth flat, you know, and just like, just flat and like it's on one side and put it on a turtle. It'd all be good. Well, uh, mm -hmm. John Richards, where can we find your stuff at? Free Thought Channel. That's where everything is put. And last night, I want to tell you about uh, our guest on Free Thought Hour last night. It was a South African guy called Davi Venden Even. And he was fantastic. He he's um oh what he isn't into. It's all about uh, neuro uh, engineering, neural engineering, media, uh, mechatronics, uh, free thought, uh, free will. Honestly, if you can get to watch that show, you won't be sorry. Sure. Very cool. cool. Very cool. You can find my stuff on YouTube. Let's chat um your and uh i'll throw it up to larry to close out the show thank you guys so much okay. for coming on. sure um my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives atheist songs and many articles on the subject of atheism i have a book atheism what's it all about on amazon uh, my youtube channel is at touter5 um, if you're having trouble really uh, leaving religious beliefs behind, you can get help from recoveringfromreligion.org. Uh, check that out. And by the way, if you're a member of clergy, but have come to see that the claims of religion are not justified, but you're stuck in the pulpit, there's help for you at theclergyproject.org. Actually, just drop the the. It's clergyproject.org. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio here in Knoxville. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye.